Hi, it's Midnight Mule, and I'm glad to say that today I'm responding to a request for information regarding what something's like being an Aspie. The reason I started this channel was to hopefully help neurotypicals who know an Aspie, either married to one or a close friend, maybe a family member. It's, from what I've read, very difficult for sometimes a neurotypical to understand an Aspie and really think how to respond to them and to appreciate why things are difficult. And it's nigh on impossible for an Aspie to understand why neurotypicals act a certain way. If that wasn't the case, things would be much easier. So hopefully by me trying to explain how me as an Aspie sees things and feels about things, it will hopefully help some people. So today's subject is about the church. Now for this to make sense, I need to give some context. I need to explain where I am coming from, what my current beliefs are, because that necessarily affects some of the struggles I have. So I think I'm starting with a potted history. I've got some notes over here that you can't see. Okay, here we go. So I grew up in a house where the family went to church. It was... Um, it was a small church. I might do another video after this running through some of the various churches I've been to because that might be interesting. So I'll try not to mention any of the churches in this one. So we went to the church and there were several meetings a week. Well, there are Sunday meetings which seem very long. I think there was a Monday one. There may have been a Thursday one or Friday one. There's certainly not a lot of meetings. But every morning, like before school, I'm not sure about Sundays, but certainly the other six days, our mum would read to us from a children's bible it wasn't this actual bible but it was a bible very much like this it's very easy words it's a narrative about the bible it's got some nice pictures in it so growing up we learn all the bible stories and we'd know what was in the bible and of course as an aspie i was retaining a lot of the information and making links in my head when we finished the book we'd then go back to the beginning and read it again so growing up we read from this Bible quite a lot. Now, something my mum used to say about me, and again, we didn't know I was Aspie till very recently, was she was aware I, my faith was very strong. And by that, I mean, if there was a, a problem or an issue or something like that, my response would be, well, just pray about it. And that's always been how I've been with things, any issues or problems, pray. I. I pray an awful lot about things and even though I've had times in my life when I've certainly drifted definitely from the church and I may have even been uh, antagonistic towards Christians and what they're trying to tell me I would still be praying at night and I still totally believed in God even though I was like being um, argumentative about certain things so yes, yeah, so I had a, a childlike faith, which is, I think, a good thing to have. But I think also that's partly because I'm Aspie, because I believe the Bible. And I'm happy to discuss that. If someone wants to know why I believe the Bible, or maybe you're atheist or agnostic watching this, and you think, how can a logical person believe the Bible? I'm fine to discuss that. But just being able to believe the Bible makes the whole thing, I guess, an awful lot easier. Now, I used to... Um, so I used to read the Bible, like I said, on my own. I'd always pray. And for one year, I happened to live in a bedsit in Pompey. It was a one-bedroom place. I had no television. There was no internet back then. I didn't have a telephone. And so every morning and every evening, I was able to read the Bible. I, and there weren't other distractions to go on. And that was a very good year for me from a spiritual point of view because I was just retaining more and more information. And obviously, it wasn't a kiddie's Bible. It was... It was more of a grown-up Bible, let's say. Um, now, something I noticed, because for geographical reasons, mostly we've I've been to various churches, is when you go from one denomination to another denomination, different things are preached. So if you've only ever been in one church, it's likely that you will think everything they teach or a lot of that they teach is right. If you then go to another church one week and you hear something different, the natural reaction is to think, oh, this church is wrong because I know my church is right. But because I went to several churches and heard contrary things, and they would all say they used the Bible, they'd all say they believed the Bible, 
it was weird it's like what is going on here and so what I did around the year 2000 I thought right I've heard so many different things from different churches I'm going to effectively forget all of it I'm just going to see what the Bible says so I then reread and studied the Bible again but with fresh eyes without thinking this is what the story in Genesis mean and then reading the Bible thinking this is what it means it's like forget what I've been told let's just see what the Bible actually says and that is a very powerful way to read the Bible and it can bring an awful lot of freedom because you're not constrained by things that are possibly taught in error and like I said it may be I've got certain things in the Bible wrong I can't remember if I said that or not I may have certain things in the Bible wrong my understanding now in certain areas is different to 10 years ago which was different to 10 years before that so I accept logically some of my current understanding may well be wrong but the point of me making these points is to say that I do believe the Bible to be what it says it is as for the church I believe the church as in the congregation of brothers and sisters true believers is extremely important and I don't want to say anything to uh, disrespect the church as in the body of believers because that is also very vital however I also think there's no doubt that a church of any size I want to say all churches certainly in most churches there will be people within the church that aren't actually Christian there be some there may be some that know they're not Christian there'll be a good number that think they are Christian but they're not actually there's certainly a good number that don't know the Bible and they maybe don't realize that they don't know the Bible very well um, so anyway so that's a bit of my background my starting point is I believe the Bible what it says at face value there's a saying which I'm comfortable with along the lines of if the plain sense makes sense don't change sense or you get nonsense some churches will read a passage and they spiritualize it they say well it doesn't mean this what it means is and they go off somewhere else now there are places in the bible where it's obvious it is a parable or it says it's a story or it says like in revelation and then i saw a sign and it says something and it's a sign so therefore you know that's not literal it's representing something else but there are plenty of other stories in the bible that the way it is written is it's literal so just take it literally and that's the approach that I take to the Bible so back to issues with being an Aspie the first section I want to look at is sensory issues now different Aspies can struggle with different uh, sensory issues my biggest struggle is sound sounds can physically hurt me is the best way to say it some sounds are really difficult some churches I've been to really struggle to set up their sound system right some have been excellent and flawless and the sound system is very good but for anyone who's been to enough churches you probably heard that sometimes maybe they got their mic in front of the speakers and there's feedback or it's really tinny or every now and then there's some sound coming over the speakers that could be irritating for neurotypicals in the congregation for an aspie where sound hurts that is really difficult it's not only distracting it hurts and it's really annoying so a church that doesn't have the sound system properly set up that is a real problem for me another one is air quality I'm very sensitive to air and how much I'm going to say oxygen is in the air so it's the same if I'm at say a work meeting and the room's quite small because people are swapping oxygen for CO2 I I can quickly get really affected or if the room's too hot and I've been to some churches where it seems like they don't air the hall all week and then you're going on the Sunday and straight away the air's a bit stale partly through the meeting it's really nasty the air the quality of the air I look around and it's like no one else is affected by this but it really really affects me that's difficult another one is smell there are certain smells especially artificial smells that really get to me and I'm really sensitive to and something you can maybe get in any walks of life but you definitely get it in church there are some people maybe older 
ladies don't know how to apply perfume and they put loads on and there might be somebody one or two chairs away and they reek and again it might be unpleasant for the normal person but for me with heightened sensitivity it is really difficult and really off-putting. The other end of the scale is people who don't look after personal hygiene at all. Sometimes you'll get somebody who smells really bad and it's like, oh, just have a wash and wash your clothes, will you? And again, it's unpleasant for normal people, but it's really difficult for me. Uh, now, I'm, I don't want to be dissing these people. I, I don't want to be saying anything bad about them per se, other than for an Aspie, this can be a really challenging thing. So they're the sentry things that will affect a lot of Aspies and a lot of walks of life. The other thing I want to look at is what's actually said. Because again, because I believe the Bible, I've read the Bible many times, I have a good idea what's in the Bible, these things can really irk me. So one is slow sermons. You'll get sometimes somebody talking at the front and they're going at quite a slow pace like this. And then they might say something and then they want to make the point so they say it again slightly differently. And then they maybe say it one more time. And I'm just sitting there thinking, come on, come on, come on. And I understand they might want to pitch to slightly below average of the person in the congregation. And so I need to have a certain amount of patience. But sometimes they just go too far. And it's like, look, we're not all stupid. Just say now some preachers never do this and they're very very good and they just go through it keeping it nice and simple but they're not repetitive about it and it's much easier so that's slow sermons something else that's irritating is when they're teaching something that's not in the bible but they're teaching it as if it is actually scriptural and of god and again if you know the bible you know what's in the bible you may hear somebody at the front and what they're saying may be true it may be interesting, but it's not biblical. It may be something about, I don't know, the climate or some social thing that's going on. But it's not biblical and it's their viewpoint. And it's it's just that you should really be preaching from the Bible. We're here to hear, or I'm here, to hear the scriptures talked about. Let's learn something there. Worse than that is when they preach something contrary to the Bible and I've been in plenty of sermons with a guy at the front speaking occasionally it's been a lady speaking and they're saying something and I'd be like well where are you getting that from this is in my head or they say something else I'm like well hang on the Bible doesn't say that and this verse says this this verse says this this verse is saying this over here and what they're saying is just plain wrong and there's plenty of church goers I've known that don't know the Bible don't know it very well at all but I've also met preachers that do not know the Bible well at all they might be very good orators and they obviously know some of the stories and maybe the general gist but they come out of some nonsense sometimes and so that's very difficult something else that's uh, I find irritating in some churches but of course you don't have to go to a church that does this is some churches seem to give pep talks and they try and explain how you can have a nicer life and so they might have a whole they might have a meeting and they talk about money and how to deal with money or other such things they may sprinkle a verse in there or two but it's about having a better life and it's like well, you can just go to TEDx and on YouTube and listen to someone giving a pep talk or oh, there are lots of places you can go and it's got nothing to do with the Bible and it's kind of their opinion so just uh, I just want to illustrate something here here's a uh, a ladybird book. It's called uh, Jesus the Friend. I just want to read you a couple of, it's very simple, hope you can see that, a couple of pages from this. Jesus and Peter and Andrew walked home. Jesus was going to have dinner with Peter's family. Perhaps friends who had been to church asked Peter how grandmother was. They all knew she would be so glad to have everything nice for their visitor, Jesus the friend of the family. When they came to Peter's house, all was quiet. There was no dinner ready. Grandmother was so ill and so hot. They asked Jesus to help her. Jesus took hold of her hot hands. Grandmother opened her eyes and smiled. She was better as soon as Jesus touched her. She got up and helped the others. There's a nice picture of Grandma. 
if you've listened to that, you've just heard more scripture than some of these places say in a whole sermon. And that really does my head in. How they can say they believe the Bible, they preach the Bible, they teach the Bible. And then you listen to their sermon and it's like, that wasn't even a sermon. What on earth was that? So in summary, because uh, I didn't want to diss the church and like I said, the uh, the Christians and the brotherhood and everything is very, very important, body of Christ. Things that are difficult for me as an Aspie with the church, sound being bad, the air quality being bad, smells being bad. I don't have problem with lights, but I'm aware some Aspies really struggle with certain lighting, like in supermarkets. Some churches can have those fluorescent tubes as well. And then because I believe the Bible and I know the Bible, I really struggle with slow sermons, teaching things that aren't in the Bible, teaching things contrary to the Bible, and pep talks. And that's about it. I uh, hope that was interesting for some of you. If you've got comments or anything to say or further questions, that would be great. I'd really love to hear them. If there's anything you want me to talk about from an Aspie's perspective, I'd be very happy to do that too.